Well, we return today with a number of headline transfer stories that all could have been the title for this episode. We've gone for Miley, who of course has been the man of much problem this year. He has moved on, and the atmosphere, unsurprisingly, has improved. We've also lost our best player and seen the return of an old channel hero. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 6 of Saving South End with me, Daniel. We are back today for a very tricky test at title contenders Chesterfield and we might also get the Gateshead game in if we're lucky. But for now, we have got a lot of transfer news to reflect on and we've also had a fair few problems with injuries. But despite that, we're competitive, at the moment we're safe and if it weren't for the points deduction, we'd have now drifted into the top 10. If you're looking forward to seeing if we can keep it up, as we've got a good run of fixtures after this Chesterfield one, and please do put a thumbs up on the video. I'm making a habit of showing you the hardest games, and today we're at the end of a three-game week, so we may well have some issues with fatigue, and we've had to sign another emergency player in defence. But let's go and start by having a look at the transfers, because it has been a very busy spell since you were last here. The big news, of course, the headline, is that Cavan Miley has moved on. He has gone to the Scottish fourth tier, Ironically, to the club that I would have been managing in this save if both Southend and Scunthorpe hadn't made it through and got new ownership. Cavan Miley is the 28-year-old who had been throwing his toys out the pram. I said he'd been at fault for a lot of the problems in the dressing room, and even though he was one of our best midfielders, it wasn't worth keeping him. It certainly worked out for Spartans, because by Scottish League 2 level, he's exceptional, and it's also worked out for us, as we'll see from the dynamic screen in a minute. In addition to Wesley Fong at Cleveland, which I think just about happened in the last episode, we've also let Alfie Bangs leave on loan at one of the youngsters who no longer is as close to first team level. And that was followed by the big disappointment of the window, which there may well be more of in a moment. The players that were on pay as you play terms, yes, I wanted to get them tied down, but they both wanted nearly two grand a week, and one of them has now chosen to move on. Nathan Ralph was poached by League One Charlton. You can't really blame him, but he was our best player. The only good news for us, really, is that he picked up a hernia a couple of days before he left, which was between the offer and him leaving. So he wouldn't have been available for us till March anyway, which does make the blow slightly less than it would have been. But it does mean we've had to use our final long-term loan of the season on a replacement left back, and that's also now going to be one of the regular five match day slots used, meaning we probably can't have many more loan players. Despite that, it has been a sea of loans since you were last here, and the first name is an old channel hero. In fact, we've got half of our old Hemel defence from FM22 now. But Cole Capecla, he was one of my favourites. If you go back to the first couple of seasons of that Hemel save, he was an absolute gem. He scored goals galore, he was solid defensively. And you know what? He's been the same for us so far. He's come in basically because Max Taylor's loan has ended. And then shortly after that, Ollie Kensdale got injured for three months because, you know, it never rains, but it pours. So he's come in and he's done all right. He's just been a solid addition. He'll be off in the middle of March, which is when Kensdale will be back and fully fit and up to sharpness. He's been followed by three more loans, including Harry Titchmarsh, who's coming on loan from Peterborough. This wasn't my deal. This was a John Still special. And my word, was it a special one? When this guy came in, basically I decided, right, now's the time for Miley to go. We got him out the door. We got the intermediary. Spartans are paying about 40% of his wages. It's not a bad effort. But this guy is magnificent. He's an improvement. He can play both midfield roles really well. And he can also play the holding role if we need to save a game. If I could get him back on loan again next year, I'd probably be quite happy with that. The left-back replacement for Nathan Ralph, though, is Matthew Carson, a player that we came up against a lot in our distillery save last year, a young Northern Irishman, and he was also briefly part of that Hemel side early in FM22. He's a good fullback, let's not be fooled, he's nowhere near as good as Nathan Ralph, but the reason I picked him over other options is he's quicker, he's taller, he's more determined, and he's better going forward. So in addition to being able to play left back, he can play left wing back, which will suit both of our tactics may also cover another man who we're likely to lose next week. The final deal is one that was done yesterday. It's an emergency one-month central defender loan. We've not got enough players to play the back three at the minute, and this guy, Amika Obi, comes in on loan from Fylde. He's played a bit of football in the National League this year. He's not match fit. It's not ideal. 
and he's not the best centre-half we've got, he's probably going to have to play today. Certainly, we'll have to feature at some point. So those are the ones that have come in. We're a little bit tight on the wage bill because, of course, people like Ralph who have gone out weren't earning any money. They were pay-as-you-play. And the people that we're bringing in, we're having to contribute wages for. So Kopech was on 800 quid a week. Obi's on 450. The needs must deals. And to get players where their loans can finish outside the window, because after Carson's arrival, we've only got short-term slots remaining, we have to have players from non-league because for the EFL players, it can't finish outside their transfer window in January. So when you add to that that the loan of Josh Stones has now expired, we are in a bit of a difficult spot. But to be fair to these lads, for the most part, they've fought really well and they've got some good results. If we have a look at the schedule in full, we've only lost one game since you were last here. We have drawn a few too many and we have had some frustrating days against lowly opposition. But overall, we've done enough to pull away from the relegation zone a bit. And we've also gone on a little FA trophy run, which was apparently demanded by the board. So after the Cambridge game, we bounced back at home to bottom of the table, Wieldston. It was a bit tighter than it should have been as they levelled it up at the hour mark. But Callum Powell, Josh Stones and Sonny Hilton eventually saw us out to victory. A two-all draw away at Eastleigh was heartbreaking. Corey Panta, the former Luton youth player, put a stunning curling free kick in the top corner in second half stoppage time from about 35 yards as well. Prior to that, Cardwell and McGrattan had scored and we put in a really good display. We beat Bromley 3-1 thanks to McGrattan, Cardwell and Hoosin. Arapin Pebble, a Luton loan player, scored a cracker in that one too. Drew two all at Kidderminster. Guess what? Former Luton player Amari Morgan-Smith equalised in the 90th minute. Lomas and Bridge had scored for us. At Woken in the FA Trophy, we rotated a lot. David Martin was man of the match. He made 11 saves, I think, before the shootout. Titchmarsh came in and had a really good game, and then they only scored one penalty, which worked nicely for us. Against Barnet, we won by three goals to one on Boxing Day. A red card really helped us out here. Mooney, Simpson, and Stones were the goals. Back-to-back 0-0 -back draws in a reverse fixture at Barnet, and then against Halifax at home, before a 2-1 defeat, disappointingly against Altrincham, but again, three games in eight days, and we just ran out of steam. Against Tamworth in the FA Trophy, we bounced back. A good 3-1 win there with Prendergast coming back from injury and scoring. Then a 3-0 win at bottom of the table, Wieldston. McGrattan, Bridge and Cardwell, they wrapped it up before half-time, which did allow us to rest a few. Not enough to have everyone fit for today, though. If we go and have a look at the team we've got, we're in a little bit of trouble. We're going away to one of the best sides in the league. We have got a week off after, which is useful. But look at this team today because there is fatigue everywhere. They're playing a 4-2-4. We've gone to our away tactic, which we couldn't actually play in one of the games recently because we didn't have enough defenders fit. You can see Lomas, Capequa, Jack Bridge all struggling and Harry Cardwell not even in the squad. What I have got to put into perspective, though, is the fact that Dan Mooney is now returning from injury. Ollie Coker is not far from coming back and Kensdale is back in light training. And D is also on the way, which is a positive sign. But there's a couple of reasons I've picked the team I have. Because normally, I would have bought in, say, a Mooney or a Pal for Jack Bridge. But he is another one on pay-as-you-play terms who is not going to sign a new deal in the wage demands we can offer. And he is wanted by several clubs. One of them, Hartlepool in the National League, who will be able to offer him a deal. And I would expect he will move on in the next week or so. With that in mind, I wanted to be careful and think, can we save players for next week who are actually going to need? It means we've got three tire players in the lineup, but in bridge and in one of the defenders, we can make a change later if need be. This is the 11 we've gone for in full though. It is David Martin in goal. He's found some form now as Andy is returning from injury. Taylor, Lomas and Kopech were the back three. Scott Morris and Carson now the wing backs for the rest of the year. We've got Hussin and Titchmarsh the midfield too. McGratton and Bridge out wide. And then this time it is Prendergast making a pretty triumphant return up front in fairness to him. And on the bench we have got some real depth but not really in the defensive areas we need it. So let's go and get through the Chesterfield away. This could be a pretty long night. Oh dear, it's about to get even longer. We've got more than the allocated five lone players in the squad. We've got two extras as well. We might have to make some changes here. What I'm going to have to do then is leave Kopechko out because he's tired. Obi will start. Kopech will drop out for Cardwell, and we've now got no centre-halves on the bench, but this is where we are. This is the team we're going for then. The substitutes bench is adapted, and Obi is now starting at left centre-back. Cole Kopechko has to drop out. Through to the game we go, Amika Obi is making his debut for the club. 
He'll be number 13 for this one month loan. And we're hopefully going to avoid conceding 13 goals. Now, as we head into this one, I'm mindful of the fact that they pipped us to the signing of Daniel Carnu, who went to Southend in real life and scored four against Solihull Moors last weekend. I'm also very mindful of the fact that in the last three episodes, we've had two of our goalkeepers gone off injured in the first half, albeit both of those were in D. Hopefully Dave Martin can avoid that today as we head into the first half. Early doors, we've got a throw on the left, of course, for Carson. He's only played two games for the club as well. And Obi's making his debut. It's not ideal. Lomas Naka next to them finds Norhusin. And that's a good switch to Scott Morris because the way that Chesterfield are set up here, they've got aggressive wing backs, they've got aggressive wingers, and they've got loads of quality in the middle. So they are going to overload us here, as Kanu does there. Thankfully, just misses his shot. But we should get a bit of joy on the counter attack out wide. And if we can push their fullbacks back, it might allow us to reduce their attacking threat too. Whether we can do that in practice is a very different question, especially with Bridge Knackered and a new player at left wing back. But we're going to try our best. We've had the better chances so far, according to the stats, but not good enough to see a highlight just yet. Quarter of the game gone, though, and I'm thrilled with nil nil. Well, as we approach half time, this has been a very quiet game of football, and I'm absolutely thrilled by it. A brilliant performance. We've been the better side according to the stats, but most importantly, we're fighting hard. The dressing room atmosphere is good. And actually, I didn't show you that, did I? Let me take a quick breather here. If we go to the dynamic screen, the club atmosphere is very good, but that partly could be due to form as well. The core social group has lost some of its uh, poorer players, shall we say, and the managerial support. Not only is it not between abysmal and very poor now, it's actually drifting towards average from poor as well. So despite having a lower reputation and only been here a short amount of time, we are starting to push this up and I'm really interested to see that our team cohesion has improved despite the fact that it's only Miley who's left the club and we've signed lots of new players. So there is a suggestion that I was right about Miley and he has caused a lot of the problems at the club. Of course, we could concede four now and ruin it, but so far it's looked so good. We've definitely been better defensively the last month as Carson gets the ball to Obi. He finds Lomas and now Taylor. Good ball into Norhusin and support out wide from Scott Morris. Don't know why the hands were going up for offside. It was nowhere near as Prendergast gets up and the head is just over. We've not got a massive attacking threat in this tactic, but it's definitely stemmed the tide defensively away from home. As we approach the hour mark, I'm looking now. There are some, some very tired players. Scott Morris, Husin, Bridge, Lomas at the back. They're all really struggling. We're going to have to make some big decisions as Lomas gets the ball again into Titchmarsh. Some good football. He's been a great find from John Still. As Bridge gets the ball again to Titchmarsh. Options out wide. He goes alone into the box. Across to Prendergast. Great save. And cleared away as far as Carson. That's magnificent goalkeeping. Taylor picks it up for Scott Morris. Into Norhusin. We're really pressuring these lot now. Scott Morris gets down the right hand side. And it's out for a throw by the corner flag. A brilliant hour from Southend. Can we keep it up for the final half an hour? We're going to go and make some changes in a minute. But first... We've got another attacking throw. Scott Morris whipping a ball in. Jack Bridges up. Can't quite win it. Carson in again. Prendergast up. It's constant pressure from Southend. Norhusin does really well. His shot's over the bar. I'm going to take off Bridge because he's playing poorer. And I want to get someone who can attack it at the back post. So I'm going to go for Dan Mooney for the last half an hour here. He is a natural left winger anyway. I'm also going to make a change in the middle with Norhusin. Although I was going to put McGrattan in there. And I'm not sure at the moment that he's any fitter or better. Nor Husin seems to be doing well. He's one of the best trainers every week. So I might leave him for now as well. The only option is whether I bring Sonny Hilton on for McGrattan or whether I bring him on for Husin. I'm going to bring him on for Lewis McGrattan because he is more versatile for future weeks. Hilton will come on on the right. He's improving in the mentoring group as well. His determination's gone up. And he is starting to improve physically as well. So we're going to go and get through with those two subs. We'll save one in case of an injury. But for 63 minutes, I'm really proud of this effort. What we've not done, though, is taken advantage of our chances. And now we've got a defender set piece. It's headed away by Taylor to the edge. Again, my players are not going out there. Mandeville to Lissa. He finds Old Acre. And the shot goes wide at the post. The former Dorking man nearly scores. But now we're competing well. One more change to come shortly. And you know what? Now he's on the bench. I'm going to throw him on. Prendergast is just back from injury. Harry Cardwell, the top scorer. 
He is coming on up front as King puts a corner in. Cardwell holds up. Cleared away long by Scott Morris and Grimes will get there. Can we find a way in this game? Because it looks like Chesterfield are finishing stronger. I think that reflects the fact that they have got, well, a significantly bigger and fitter squad with higher quality too. We're out on our feet defensively and this is where it gets dangerous. We often can see late goals because of it. And we nearly did there. Just wider the post it goes. With 10 minutes remaining, this is some effort by the boys. We'll encourage them. We'll try and get them to the end. We might have to throw the time wasting on. But look now, Dan Mooney's picked up a pulled hamstring. I can't take him off because we need to hold on and we need the shape there. But it never rains, but it pours. It's going to be the catchphrase of this series, isn't it? We just cannot keep people fit. I'm going to drop the tactic in a bit now. Just put Hilton on a support duty. The fullbacks or the wingbacks, sorry, can go to defensive ones, which suits them both. We're also going to put Hoosin in as a sort of ball winner on defend. Just go a little bit deeper there. And then we're also going to time waste all the time. Won't worry about passing into space here. Won't play quite as wide. Won't overlap at all. And we'll slow the pace down because I know it's a bit defeatist to time waste here. But to get a 0-0 draw at Chesterfield chasing the title, the best side on paper in this league, would be a ridiculous effort. I am so, so proud of that performance. Another 0-0 draw, but they're so important at the minute. We're getting a job done. We're fighting really hard. Now, thankfully, we've got a week off. You've got to be kidding me. On a Monday afternoon, Aaron Prendergast is recalled from his loan spell at Southend because we weren't playing him in his preferred role. He's only made five appearances and three of them were off the bench as he came back from injury. I was just trying to get him up to speed. That seems incredibly harsh. We might need to get another striker out because Mooney's out for a few weeks. I'd want to play 4-4-2. I hope the gate said Hilton can cover up front, but they're the only two we've got. So we might have to make another loan sign in, but then two of them still can't be in the squad. Back in a moment of Saturday, where hopefully we resolve that issue. Well, it's fitness test time and we have got our man. If we go back to Monday afternoon, Colin and D has picked up another injury on his training returning from his last one. That means we've now got five players out because Demetriou probably wouldn't have played anyway, but he's picked up a virus. And if we go back to Monday, this is the man we've got. Sean Adarkwa from Wealdston, a player who can't get in the team at the bottom of the division, has come in on a one month loan, but I think he's all right for what we need. I'll bank on him to get a goal or two as well. Let's go and get through to the fixtures though. It is South End United versus Gateshead. They are up in the top half. They beat us in the last episode. We want to get revenge. They've got a good team. They're playing a 4 3 3. We're going to try and counter that with our 4 4 2. We'll be back in a moment once we've picked our 11 and we'll run through it for the big game. Well then, we've officially reached the stage. We've got grayed out backup goalkeepers on the bench because we don't own enough players to make up a 16 without loan players. We've got the maximum five in a squad with Obi and Simpson missing out. Shauna Darkwa is on the bench and probably will feature today. But this is the 11 that we've gone for. David Martin, of course, now stays between the sticks because Andy got injured again. Carson and Scott Morris, the fullbacks with Lomas and Capequa centre half. McGratton and Bridge who's still here on the wings with Titchmarsh and Hoosin in the middle and then Cardwell and Hilton at the front too. Hilton of course not really a striker but it'll do the job for us today. But let's go and get through to it. It is a big game against Gateshead. Can we avoid defeat and edge closer to safety? Well here we go against the Gateshead side that have made just one change. They've still got Archie Mare in goal, Robbie Tinkler, Pye, Booty. We know they're all good players but they've also got Billy Chadwick up front is fairly quick in real life so that might be a bit of an issue let's go and get the lads inspired and motivated we're into the first half the crowds are creeping up again now we're improving but we could really do with a result i know we're going to get outnumbered in midfield but we've got quality in wide areas i'm hoping we can take advantage with it as carson has got a corner kick plenty of players in the box and here it goes to the back post cardwell's up He's not been in prolific form recently and he's not often been that fit in fairness but he is still the number one striker at this club. I've managed to get him and Nor Hussin tied down to new deals for next season and they're going to be a big part of our rise because they're brilliant players. They just need a bit more depth around them as Hilton gets down the right. Here we go again. Booty nicks it back as far as McGratton. Nor Hussin. 
inside the titch marsh. Been robbed of possession there by the striker. And they bring it away on the right with Wern. He carries it inside. Carson wins it back. Brilliant work. Hussein goes back to Scott Morris, who's sitting a bit deeper now. He goes out to McGratton. Support from Cardwell, who will hold it up. Runs inside of him. Hilton's one of them. Brilliant move. Just over the bar. Oh, Dan Mooney would have scored that, but oh well. We're playing good stuff. We've got 10 to the break. And we're still 1-0 up as Scott Morris has a throw. Hilton finds McGratton and Hoosin. Back to Titchmarsh. Into Cardwell. Penalty kick. Cardwell will take it. He scored one already. He's feeling confident. Can he make it a brace? Can he get back into proper form? Because if he can, we'll be flying up the table. Cardwell shoots. That's unstoppable. Keeper went the right way, but it flew into the top corner at speed. And with five minutes to the break, we've doubled our lead. And things are starting to look pretty good. Well, at half time, it's been a very efficient display. We've had two shots on target, scored two goals. Harry Cardwell is back to his best. And despite being depleted in several areas, we're doing a great job. As Carson, with a corner again, header from Capequa straight at Mare. Would love to see him get a goal, to be honest. As Archie Mare will look for the long kick, I'm sure. Don't let them get a route back into this, as Scott Morris brings it down. McGratton's down the line, and he finds him. He goes back to his fullback again. Inside to Norhusin. That support from Titchmarsh. Looks wide to Bridge. We switch the play really well. And this is where we have the overload. Carson gets down the left. Bridge is inside of him. But Carson goes for the cross. Hilton's there. It's forced a little wide. Across to Cardwell. Hat trick for Harry Cardwell. He's not got one of them for a while. 25 goals for the season. A magnificent effort. It's a perfect hat trick too. Ah, oh, wonderful stuff. Two minutes gone in the second half with 3-0 up. Revenge at the moment looks like it's going to taste sweet, but we don't often keep home clean sheets and McGratton's trying his best to save it. It comes to Scott Morris on the right. Out to McGratton again. Could we get a real thump in here? We haven't had one since about September, I wouldn't have thought. As Otley gets it to earn, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just win the game. Brilliant from Titchmarsh. Look how hard they're working. No bad eggs in the dressing room. That's the secret for FM24. Hilton's nicked it again. Goes for the shot himself. It's over the bar. We're strutting our stuff. We look confident. And we're absolutely battering them. Well, about 70 minutes on the clock. I don't really want to make changes because we're playing so well. But I am going to eventually do it. We're going to bring a dark one on for McGratton. Just so he can make it worth his while being here. He'll go up front with Hilton out to the right. On the left, we're going to take off Bridge. And we're going to bring on Callum Powell, who hasn't featured as much recently, but has been really good for us this year. And Lomas, he'll get a much needed rest at the back with Harry Taylor coming on to deputise. 15 to go. What a performance. Now, can we keep a clean sheet? Or will it be the usual score of 3 1? We're into two minutes of stoppage time. I think we might, you know. Defensively, we are really improving. Cardwell's back in the goals as well. That is about the perfect episode. A great draw at Chesterfield. A brilliant win at home to Gateshead. We're up to 16th. We are now, what, six points off the top half. This is going to be a good finish to the season. We are confidently safe now. Harry Cardwell is back in form. So let's go and have a look at the schedule of when we're going to be back. Unless we go on a really big FA Trophy run, I'll split the rest of this season into two episodes so we don't make it drag on. We'll come back around the start of March because we've got Oldham, which is a great game. Dagenham are struggling. Aldershot are up in eighth. Maybe we'll do those two. Although that might be a bit soon. But we'll find a couple of games to do around the halfway point. And hopefully we can finish the first season in style. If you enjoyed this one though, two brilliant performances and two clean sheets to make it five from six in the league. then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the sign-ins, the loan squad that we patched together and the hard work we've done on the training ground to make this team better defensively. Harry Cardwell is tied down for next season, and hopefully he's going to finish with a flourish. If you want to find out if he does, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back tomorrow as we move onwards and upwards, but in the meantime, we'll be back with a head coach later today. We had our transfer special yesterday. You can find the playlist so far up in the eye above. There's also links there to the Twitch channel, the football podcast, and so much more. But thank you very much for watching as always, and I'll see you back here at the same time tomorrow as we look to secure our safety.